like uh, the theater and that kind of thing. Because I love theater. I love live theater. I think it's very important that people go and see live theater and to keep that tradition alive instead of going to movies and, uh, you know, wasting your money on something that, you know, you don't know if it's going to be good or bad. Yeah, I think an actor is a good job for you. Yeah, I love acting. I, I'm really con- comfortable in standing in front of people and giving a speech. Uh, I don't get panicky about it. The only time I get panicky is when I sing in front of people, and that's very few and far oh. between. <laughs> yeah. But I'm the only I one like, in my family. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm the only one in my family who can carry a tune in the bucket. You should hear us when we're singing Happy Birthday. Sounds like a funeral dirge. <laughs> We're all out of tune. Oh, yeah, I, 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 say, yeah say, same here. Oh, like, well, whenever, whenever, whenever anyone is singing, is singing "Happy Birthday," I, I, I'm the one who's always the troll and sings it like this: "Happy Birthday to you. You live in a zoo. You <laughs> look like a monkey, and you smell like one too." <laughs> Because I have to add a little levity to the funeral procession of <laughs> you know, just like I gotta I, I gotta add a little bit of, of funny to it to like yeah, drown out the the monotone going through the motions. <laughs> you gotta make it comedic when everyone else is just flat dolls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, to what to what you were saying to Lauren, it reminded me of a a story that um Vinnie Eastwood once told on a on a past PSEC episode, like Well, an example I can cite is my uh, my former uh co host on the Vinnie Eastwood show, like maybe uh, five years ago, I think he uh, he left the show, and um, he was talking at the time about uh, doing a thing called uh, Infomatrix uh, uh, in New Zealand, Infomatrix.com. And um, he says, "I got to do it perfectly. I got to do it right, and got to do it, got to do it absolutely 100%. You know, the the, the right way. It's got to be good. It's got to be good." And uh, I met him a, uh, about a week or two ago, and um, I said, "So what what are you doing now, bro?" He goes, I'm, uh, I'm working in a cafe, and I've still got a whole bunch of projects in my head and stuff like that, and it's, it's like, dude, you just spent five years. What have you got to show for it? Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. it's the yeah. bravery, just trusting in yourself to just go out and do it three sheets to the wind. What it, whatever comes, wh- wherever the chips fall, just take responsibility for it. But the first thing that you have to do is just trust your instincts and trust yourself Otherwise, you uh, are perpetually in this sort of um, third-party perspective where you're trying to look at everybody um, as as how they perceive you, right? And it's the opposite way. You're supposed to look at everybody and perceive them your own way, and you're supposed to act like yourself. And I noticed this very poignantly whenever I've gotten up to speak at, say, um, heavily socialist or, or heavily right-wing sort of uh, party meetings or, or something like this, and I want to say something conspiratorial. I try to tone it down, to dumb it down, so, so to speak, or try to go after like a, a few isolated little thingies. And I found I get tongue-tied because if I can't express myself in the way that I normally do and I'm trying to please everybody else, I can't speak or think clearly. <laughs> That's yeah. happened exactly to me as well. Yeah, I've had that same exact thing happen. Yeah. And, and it's, it's um, when you're comfortable, um, ult- ultimately, uh, in front of the microphone, in front of the audience, that you really come into your own. And that's why it's called coming into your own. You know, it's like somebody comes yeah. up and they're like, oh, we're going to save your life. This is going to be good. We're going to teach you how to do this, that, and the other. We're going to give you this education. It's only going to cost you $50,000 in debt that you'll never be able to pay off. <laughs> hey, it'll, be great, it'll be a great education. My, uh, my mate Daryl, um, I talked to him the other day, and I said to him, "Bro, how many how many years have you been studying?" And he goes, "Oh, I've been studying for seven years." Oh, okay. And uh, how much debt have you got there? Uh, about fifty thousand dollars. And uh, how much equipment have you got where you can actually apply all those video and audio editing skills uh, to? And he goes, "Well, I've got none of it." So I go, "Well, well, what what if? Just 
just open your mind real wide and just what if <laughs> you got yourself into debt and bought a whole bunch of equipment that you could actually do? How much equipment would 50 grand get you? And he goes, well, I'd be totally set up. I'd virtually have my own studio. And I go, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, Prioritizing uh, spending money on an intangible education for, uh, that is uh, based upon the use of equipment that you can't afford because you paid for an education how to use it. I say, yeah. get the equipment first and use it. There's your fucking <laughs> education. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, it's it's just like the idea that oh, you in order for the human brain to be capable of processing information, you need to be physically sitting in an institution called a school. Otherwise, if you're anywhere else, then then you know your your neural networks are just going going to lock up and freeze, and you'll be unable to learn unless unless the almighty gods of of media and government and everything are have you in this physical building that will magically allow those neural networks to unlock and process. But otherwise, nope. Sorry, if you're not in a physical building, well, your brain can't learn anything. Then it's like, what the fuck. And as How far many? as what you were saying saying about, you know, the whole, this needs to be a certain way, I've noticed that in both the, the so-called truth and the spiritual movements, too, especially within internet radio, it's starting to almost get, like, similar to the mainstream, whereas before, they were like, oh, who cares about, you know, um... Uh, professionalism, who cares about, you know, aligning with the status quo, who cares about ratings, this, that, and the other. It's more important to just speak your truth. And then, not too horribly long ago, and I'm not going to name names or drop names or anything like that, but I'm just going to say that there was there was somebody within um, within radio who was, who was uh, basically um, commenting to me privately about PSEC and, you know, me and, and Katarina and Rich and everybody and all what we're doing. And this guy was like, well, Dave, you just, you have no, you have no content. Um, you know, you, you, you need some content. And I'm like, no content, really? I've got this whole YouTube channel full of stuff, this, that. So what, how do I not have content? It's like, well, well, you know, you're, you're just, you're, you're not, and I'm summarizing this. You're not sticking to mainstream, you know, guidelines, and and there's ratings to consider, and the, and p people need to be kept interested, and this needs to be in this specific format, and that needs to be this, and and this anal format here, and this strict protocol there, and this is a guy who was pre who was who would previously be getting on air saying, you know, none of that matters. It just matters speaking your truth and being yourself, and and the human awakening, and now. It's like, well, Dave, you know, you are you don't have any content because of blah, blah, blah. And then he went so, so far as to tell me, and, and you know, Ka like, Katarina doesn't need you to babysit her anymore. She, uh, she doesn't need a guru. She can fly free on her own. This person apparently has no idea of the understanding that someone like me and Katarina could actually, honest to God, be friends and that she doesn't work for me or beneath me. We work with each other as equals. We have a deep, close, legitimate friendship, and we also work together on projects. And in that stuffy, professional, oh, ratings are more important type of thinking, these ideas just cannot be understood by people. It's just like, friends? That can't happen. What, do you think we're humans? No, we're robots <laughs> in a machine. Yeah. We can't well, have it's, human it's not about relations. It's not about doing it as good as someone else. It's doing the best that you can do, right? Like, I, I listen to uh, a lot of other shows, watch, watch a lot of things and comedians and, and, and what have you, and I allow them to inspire me and I allow them to uh, uh, show me different things and different paths that I can go down and, and search out. And speaking, thinking, talking... You know, the whole nine yards of it, whenever you're in talk radio, it's about insight. And you sit there every single day, like, I, like I've been doing, you know, five, six, seven days a week for like five years. And you get better as each show progresses, only just a little bit better. It's kind of like a watching a child grow. You don't notice the, uh, the difference from one day to the next, but if you don't see them for six months, they're very, very much l larger, right? So you go back mm -hmm. and, and uh, listen to my 2010 archives 
and then you listen to, say, a show I did yesterday, and you can see a uh, massive improvement. Now, it doesn't mean you, you have, I had anybody telling me what to do. It just means that I can listen to myself from an objective standpoint and think, hmm, I can improve, tweak that little bit here. It's what my, uh, my somewhat fabulous former producer used to call plussing. Whenever you go to give somebody feedback about a show they're doing, you don't give them negatives. You don't say you shouldn't be doing that, you shouldn't be doing that. What you do is you do pluses. You go, you should uh, do a little bit more of that. You can improve on that little uh, uh, puppy right there. And what it does is it creates a positive multi-spectrum path for you to develop on and evolve as a radio show host. And if you're very concerned about it, uh, overly concerned about it, you become afraid of what you'll say. And that is not a good thing uh, for a radio show host to be. They need to be courageous. They need to be brave. They need to speak the truth regardless of what consequences there are for it because the radio show host knows that not speaking the truth has far dire consequences than just repeating it, you know? Exactly. That's why it was such a shock when this person, um, you know, approached me like that because... My previous impression of them is that, you know, they were the cr courageous type that was just going for the truth. And, um, you know, within that, that incident with this person, they also went so far as to say that, you know, um, the people that, you know, some of the people that I've had on that um, were just expressing about, you know, their own shifts and their own dichotomies and dealing, you know, dealing with life and, and that, um, you know, they, they've they been inspired to, to face and clear these things and to continue to improve and, you know, not let society get them down and so on and so forth. He, he proceeded to tell me that that is whining. Oh, these people, they are whining. Yet he's had exactly uh, the same, you know, sorts of, of people on, you know, what he's done that, you know, have gone on, you know, similar rants, like, you know, gone on all the societal dichotomies and their own internal mal malware and then stating what they've learned that, you know, despite all this, um, you know, this, this has taught me to become more empowered in this area and, you know, to not to not give up and keep going and so on and so forth. So he was always kind of, you know, an advocate of that sort of can expression. I, can I say something here? Here's sure. the problem with putting people on a pedestal. Every single person that you put on that pedestal is a human being that is inherently mm -hmm. flawed. And the, the, a day will come when they fall from that pedestal that you put them up on and you're the one who actually gets crushed when they come tumbling down, not them. <laughs> so, don't put them so don't put them up, all right? Um, there's there's also a documentary anybody can can look up on on YouTube called um, uh, I think it's called the College Conspiracy, and um, no it's not some conspiracy theory video it's it's more like um an, an economic thing that goes into details about uh, about colleges and college debt and and you know and, and like the whole you know the flaws with that system and so many people spend spend all this money and all it ends up being is a waste of money. From the time an American child reaches the sixth grade, they are taught that the key to success in life is to do well in high school so that they can get accepted to the best possible college. The better grades they get in high school, the better college they will have an opportunity to get into. They are taught that if they get into a great college and get their college degree, any type of job they desire in the field of their choice will be there waiting for them. After getting their dream job, they will be able to buy any car and house they desire, start their own family, and live the American dream. Most Americans today have an expectation of future economic success simply by obtaining a college degree. The entire purpose of elementary school is to prepare students for high school, and the entire purpose of high school is to prepare students for college. In fact, the U.S. now has hundreds of private college preparatory high schools that, at a cost of $25,000 per year, are supposed to increase students' chances of getting into a top-tier college. Students are taught to believe that if they don't go to college, they will be on a path to nowhere and will have no chance of ever building a successful career. Government regulations like No Child Left Behind have left grade and high schools in shambles. Instead of teachers having the freedom to think outside the box and use creative techniques to prepare their students for the real world, 
They are forced to be narrow-minded and teach with worthless information that will never help their students have successful careers. Today, there are no high schools left in America that teach students the knowledge necessary to start their own business, invent their own product, or even how to use the internet and other free resources to become educated about things without attending college. The annual cost to attend the average private four-year college in America today is $27,293, up 29% from five years ago during the 2005-2006 school year when the annual tuition cost $21,235. This does not include the cost of textbooks, which have tripled over the past decade. Colleges are now charging $200 for each single textbook that has no resale value because they put out new, slightly revised versions with a new name each year. The textbook publishers are even colluding with college bookstores to make custom textbooks so that students can't save money by buying them online. Colleges are getting kickbacks from publishers in order to destroy the used textbook market, which by itself is proof enough that college administrators are only interested in lining their own pockets and have no interest in helping their students. Like, yeah, if, you're, if you want to be, like, a heart surgeon or a lawyer, like, something that really requires it, like, yeah, I, I do not want anybody operating on me that doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, you know, have those degrees and that, that collagen and all that, otherwise get the fuck away from me, but when it, when it comes to most things, you don't really need the college, people just have forgotten, they're capable of learning, you know, just like spend the money on the tools you need and then learn how to use them. And then once you learn how to use the tools, then you can go into doing what you need to do. So you make a completely valid point with the history stuff. Like you said, you could work at museums and one. And as you learn about all this history stuff, you could even set up oh, whether it's YouTube, a library or bit shoot or wherever, like you could set up your own educational channels and stuff like once you get like a halfway decent laptop and I help you put Linux on it with speaking uh, speaking of Jasmine, a, a disk, please, a blank disk. That's all we need for this, man. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, if you, you go in the, go in that that direction and, you know, and you could download all the free tools that are free to make the content and everything. And then you take that history knowledge and you start putting together videos on, on, on you know, all of the stuff that you're into. And you put that out there for people. And, and you know, you can you can launch launch it that way. I actually so do have two videos on my YouTube channel that are history related. One is over the uh, uprising in Poland. Uh, I, I can't believe you forget about it. I don't know why I'm forgetting about it, but I did it as like a substitute for paper from our World War II teacher. He didn't accept it, but he did watch it. He said, it's good. It's very accurate, but I'm still not accepting it for a grade. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, and I'm thinking, oh, you should. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, because I mean, I had all everything. I had a proper citations. I cited all the photos I used, did it properly. And uh, then I made one on D-Day and I did the exact same thing where I just narrated, you know, like what led up to D-Day, the events of D-Day. You know, that that kind of that kind of like uh, academic Tom fuckery in the in the in the face of creativity reminds me. And Richard will remember this and he's he, he probably knows what I'm about to say. Um, I forgot the details, but he had to do, um, like a paper on, on something and like everybody else in the class just did like a, a spreadsheet or a PowerPoint or whatever it was. It was very bland, but the teacher said, be as creative as you want, do whatever, whatever format you want. So apparently Richard got more creative than academia likes as far as creativity. Uh, we did a PSEC episode. So it was, no, a, it, it wasn't it was, a paper. It was a final, it was a final project. Okay. Well, so whatever it was, it was we for did... it was for my uh, speech and communications class in college. Yeah. So we did a video presentation while everybody else did the bland powerpoints and whatever, and um, his teacher got a little triggered by that. Yeah. I mean, I told my professor. I'm saying, hey, uh, 
I'm shit at writing papers. I know you don't like reading them because you professors take freaking forever to grade them. And uh, we don't like writing them. So I'm going to give you something that will hopefully keep your interest and also provide a lot of interesting details. And he is like, not accepting it. Yeah, and even on like his, because at the end of the semester, they allow us to do like reviews on teachers. I say, do not accept my awesome video. And I left a link in it in case anybody reviewing it wants to watch it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's 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 a part of the big a big problem in in academia. It's like, you know, a lot of these so called teachers, so called professors, they'll kind of lead their students in like, oh, be creative, express yourself, do this, do that, and it's allowed. And then when anybody has the audacity to do something beyond bland, mediocre bullshit and actually gets creative, then the professor's like, I'm not accepting that. That's nah, nah, you triggered me. Ugh. Yes, Jasmine. I was going to say, like, also, Dave, I'm thinking of getting that disc once I get my own room. Okay. Well, whatever, whatever you want to do. Just, I, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't really sure what the issue with getting the disc was because it's kind of a simple thing. Once you have the, we could burn the Linux to it, and then I could help you just like I did the other laptop. It's just you have a new laptop. Do I just need to send a copy of a blank? Do I just need to say, no, send? No, I'm pretty a blank sure we do have now. a blank disc. I'm pretty sure we do have a blank disc somewhere. I just want to wait until I get my own room because I'll already be busy and. Well, whatever, whatever you want to do. Getting a bunch of new stuff for that, so I'm thinking, yeah. why not have a new system for my laptops as well? Well, what, whatever you, stuff, whatever you want to do. All else I was going to say is that the reason it, we need a new blank disk, like as opposed to the disk we yeah, used to install Linux on the I, other one, yeah. is because newer laptop can handle the newer Linux, and the newer Linux is the better Linux. So you know, Not really. I like 18.1 better. Well, he likes the interface better, but it's infrastructurally, um, like there's there's a whole like section of software that's that's available um, for Linux Mint um, 19.1 onward that is not at all available in the repositories for the 18. Point whatever. So like there's this entirely new um, cool so- software section, and like that's that's definitely one of the things I, I I like about the version 19. Point you know series of it. One, the only thing I don't like about about the 19 point series of it is probably the sa- the the main same thing that that Richard doesn't like is that before with the version 18 point whatever um, you you can have bars like on the top and the bottom with program icons and things whereas with 19 point one you can only have that on the bottom and and you can't you can't have that on the top and I don't know why they did that. Oh, well, that's weird because I have two bars on the top and the bottom, and. But I mean, for the programs, like you know, like like the bar where you can actually pin program icons. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I used to be able to do that on the top and the bottom, and now, uh, you know, you, you have to pick one, top or bottom. Like you can position anywhere on the screen that you want. But the point is, is that I was able to do it with with both at the same time, and now I can only do it with one. But that's a that's a minor thing to me. Well, the problem is also on Linux Mint nineteen point one is there depending on the web pages, some web pages have trouble loading with nineteen point one. Like the interfaces don't work quite right within the browsers, and I've noticed I've just some really that. weird problems. Like the other day, I was trying to do money transfer stuff on uh, a website that I use for through my school and whatever and i was trying to enter in my connecting information with my other bank account the thing would not load it wouldn't allow me to even type anything in it was being all weird i went on 18.1 it worked no problem so i have uh, i have not experienced that at all on on well i have and it's annoying and not only that i have i've been having trouble with my bluetooth uh on my laptop with 19.1 and my phone isn't detecting the laptop my laptop isn't detecting the phone i don't know what the heck's going on that's weird that's the government <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well 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 all i can all i can say is, is jasmine on the off chance that that 19.1 gives you any any kind of troubles we can always just go version 18.3 like we hooked you up before with um it was either 18.1 or 18.2 we could always I just go 18.2 okay well, we we could always just do do eighteen point three if um 
What's 19. the difference between 18.1 and 18.2 and 3? Um, various improvements and, and upgrades and things like you'd literally like you'd literally have to go through the documentation and like you know compare everything and like I, I don't want to get into this big like you know 15 minute long segment about the difference between all the different Linux versions like like if y'all ever want to have a PSEC discussion just about like Linux like I'm like fucking a I'm good I, we can do that uh, but, but honestly. I mean, Honestly, I don't really mind if it's just one taskbar. Is that it? This white one is like, is that the, is that the one thing you don't like that you said? Well, well, no. Like you've got, you can put, you can put the bars anywhere. But you know the thing where you can pin the icons for the different applications. Well, on yeah. Linux and eight eighteen point one two and three, you can you can have the t- a top and bottom bar do that. In other words, you, you can have your cake and eat it too. You can do both. You could have some on the top, some on the bottom. Whereas with uh, the the version nineteen point, you know that series, it's top or bottom, but not both. I'm fine with that. I'm honestly. Yeah, honestly. yeah that's really the only the only thing that irks me about it. But it's it's really a minor thing. It doesn't really yeah yeah you know, bother me. I'm going so, with um, that. so Richard, fine. Richard, as far as your expansions and facing contrast and you know viewing it as a positive opportunity and you know th- your your process is within that i think we should have richard talk now because i think everybody has talked but richard at this point I'm <laughs> R- richard needs to say some stuff and i need to shut up well um last three months i mean this whole 2020 has been or er, 2019 has been very interesting um so when I started out last year, I was still working the same old job that I've been working for the last four years at the truck stop. Um, and then come March, I got employed by Mercy Flights, worked for them for about a month, summarily fired by Mercy Flights, then got another job at Fred Meyer, been working there since. So been bouncing back and forth with employers, been really kind of fascinating in and out and all of that stuff, but making it just fine. The real jump into my year of expansion is regardless of the failure in the early earlier part of the year. I rebounded from it. I dusted myself off. And I am currently with the Rogue Community College um, paramedic program right now. It is a 12-month program. I'm currently getting ready to go into month four of this long process, or month five, actually, somewhere around there. Anyway... About to go into the winter term. Um, I just got done with my first three months in the program. Um, passed this term with all A's, straight A's. And my big expansion so far has been jumping into the healthcare industry and working my way towards getting my paramedic licensure and certification, getting my associate's degree, and finally finishing this long journey that I've been on with school and this year, if everything goes well, um, I will graduate the program. I will go for a three-month um, internship out in the field with Mercy Flights yet again and just do run calls and gain all my uh, field internship experience on top of all the hospital clinical stuff that I've been doing, working at all the local hospitals, uh, working in the operating room with anesthesiologists. I was... In the, I've been in the OB a few times. I've gotten to see a C-section, gotten to see um, a natural birth and delivery. Um, I still have to get and see one more. Um, but the point is, I've been getting out there, getting into the community, into the healthcare community um, as a student, getting hands-on with patients, doing physical assessments, vital signs. Uh, this term just started. Uh, practicing my skills, so doing IVs, giving medications, hanging IV V lines and bags and everything else, and um, assisting the healthcare teams in care of patients, observing doctors. Um, so this whole year has just been a complete growth and expansion phase. It's been a complete jump. Um, for me, in terms of confidence, I've been faced this term with 
so many different challenges and um, obstacles to overcome, just overwhelming amounts of coursework, overwhelming amounts of lab assignments, overwhelming amounts of um, clinical expectations, and I've been able to overcome them. And to top off the end of this term, I had pneumonia and didn't study at all through Thanksgiving. I was sick as a dog and down for, a, down for the count. And I still scored the highest in my class on the final exam. I passed my skills finals. I mean, so safe to say this term has been a confidence booster for me. And just seeing what I've been able to do this term just gives me confidence going forward into this year that I'll be able to complete this program. I'll be able to see it through. I'll be able to get it done. And I'll be able to get out there in the healthcare field and work as an ER tech in the hospital and, you know, start moving forward with my goals and start going towards what I want to do later down the road, not only as a healthcare provider, but eventually, you know, have the financial ability and incentive and resources and income to be able to pursue my longer term goal of becoming a pilot, getting into aviation and, you know, pursuing my, my dreams of becoming a, man who flies airplanes and pursues the ultimate passion of aviation itself. Um, so yeah, this year has been a real e expansion as it will. The, the end of the year of light into this energetic run up to the year of expansion, you know, it's just kind of set me up for the year of expansion, just that explosive growth going forward and just achieving goals and, being the change that I want to see in my own environment, doing what I need to do for myself and creating a better environment for myself. And by extension, those around me who, you know, want to be a part of that journey with me. So, so yeah. Another thing that's really, really cool, like, on the world stage level of things, because of all the tomfuckery, not going to get into the details, but just going to say because of it, because of that contrast and that overreach, all the all of the alternative um, social media and alternatives to YouTube and Facebook and things like that have been getting a massive boost, and even among what you might call the normie population, the people that are not, don't really know or care about anything political or what's going on, but they're even starting to be irked by this stuff and it's been causing this massive um flood of new users into into mines into bit shoot into into library net like as, like there's no way to know the exact figures but rough estimates are some are basically 10,000 plus new accounts daily on all, on all these different different services because that that fire has been lit. It's just yet another example of, you know, you've got the negative contrast and it can lead to this positive expansion because moving into these alternative platforms that support freedom of freedom of speech and especially the ones that are uh, decentralized, Web 3.0, that sort of thing, like, it's really good. Like, you know, we need to, to evolve the internet in this direction. It's really good technology. It's really, it's really powerful technology. It's really beneficial. And <clears throat> I've even been seeing, like, a lot of larger channels move on to these platforms like you know we are changed luke luke radowski um you know he's been on bit shoot for a while and i and i hadn't seen him you know move towards you know um library so max egan direct friends you know with luke i i was just like hey max you know um next time you get a get a chance to you know talk to luke because you know i know you talked to him directly um uh, could you please just let him uh, let him know about about library because I think he would really enjoy the platform, and you know I also directly talked to one of the developers who you know is in, involved with library and you know and he would love he he said he would love Luke, Luke Radowski to get on there like Alex Jones and Stefan Molyneux and all these other people got on there it's like man I'd love it if if we could get We Are Change on there too so. I was just like, well, you know, I, I asked I asked Max to tell him about it. Um, I you know I can't make make promises, but you know it's like if the message is re received, I don't see any reason why Luke wouldn't you know uh, move forward to that. Well, 
not too long later and you know just the other day what do i what do i see in the new trending whatever like bam we are change like it's there like it's there now he you know he he created the account and his youtube channel is synchronized and and all that and like he's got a lot of followers so like i think that's that's really cool yet a, a yet another demographic of people who can not only find out about library but also all the people on library who m might not know about we are change who will like you know see that content pop up and be like hey cool what's this so you know these uh, these um decentralized platforms and alternative platforms are are you know even though they've been created in the face of this negative contrast kind of like hey screw you youtube screw you mainstream we're doing our own thing it, even though it's been birthed in that it's just been really developing into increasingly you know more positive things and um, you know it just keeps getting better and better and better and like i just see it as a complete and total positive all, all the way across the board just it's it's really great to see this to see this expansion and see things moving in this direction and i i just think it's a really great wonderful awesome you know positive thing and i'm 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 very happy to see it Kristen, any any other thoughts? I'm I'm pretty sure you're still here. I've just been listening to everything. Um, I'm really liking what you guys are hearing. I think it's just like, oh, another thing for me, which I may have already kind of said, is just um, out of excuses to um, hold myself back or not be who I am, not go through uncomfortable growth because there's just there's just no denying it or avoiding it anymore. It's just kind of where I'm at. So I'm hoping that that's like what m more people can get to that point as a group because there's a lot of change that needs to be made. Yeah. So, so. you're, you're, you're seizing the opportunity and <clears throat> launching into positive changes for yourself and you know some of them will be an uncomfortable growth process but you also know that it's going to be positive and beneficial and you know that business as usual can no longer continue so it just kind of seems to be the dominating lesson and it seems to right. be what we're all kind of being pushed into so obviously the the more things move move in this direction there's going to be people that want to hold on to the old structures and the old dysfunctional ways and they're going to be tantruming as as they have been as they do and you know that's that's going to be you know a, it's going to be way more in, intense but i think that all of that intensity of the tantrumings of of tyranny and and whatever inappropriate behaviors they might decide to do in their hubris i think you know in the long run it really only serves to benefit us because it just kind of acts as excuse after excuse to move into that positive change more and more people you know can say hey you know look at how that how yucky that's getting we can't afford to have that like that anymore so it's you know it's time for us to move into our power and to move into this po you know this positive changes and to get out of this learned helplessness and stockholm syndrome and really embrace our power and just you know have more of that that you know i can do it attitude instead of looking for saviors or or wallowing in in self-pity or, or whatever just that more genuine empowered attitude and knowing that just being able to admit to a problem and look at a problem in and of itself is not negative is not nihilism is not fatalistic is not racist is not bigoted it's not hate speech it's not you know it's not any of that it's just being able to look at something and say hey there's a problem here but let's let's work together to solve it we can do this we can come together you know we can uh, we can get up off our butts we can we can use our power and we can just come come together and collectively start to create all this positive change that all of our selected misleaders and cult leaders and everything else just don't seem to to want to do because they're not working in our best interest so it really is up to us